So welcome back, everybody, to the channel. I am very pleased to have the man himself, Lex Van Dam, joining me. Welcome, Lex. How Thanks, are you doing? Uh, Thanks, James. I mean, obviously, we've been working together pretty much since Million Dollar Traders, which uh, I think it's been more than 10 years now. Time flies. You've grown up. I've aged probably, <laughs> hopefully not as much as I, I feared I would, but, but still. Um, whole new generation of traders out there at the moment. Um, when we did the experiment with, with eight people who never traded before, they, um, they ended up outperforming the, the professionals. And now I'm interested in myself learning more about um, the traders that are out there, the small traders, the day traders. Um, it seems like with, with, all the new, with all the recent news that uh, you know, a lot of money is being made and maybe some lost as well. Um, so so I, I think you and I want to come back um, and talk regularly about markets. But for me, there's no point unless uh, people who watch these videos also, you know, give some comments, contribute, ask some questions. You know, they can email you um, and, and then we can talk about it because the last thing I want to do is sit here behind, uh, you know, video, waste, wasting time, um, nobody interested. I also don't want to give my opinion on, oh, I think the market's going up or the market's going down, or oh, I think inflation is doing this or inflation is doing that. So I have no real interest in, in, in any of that anymore. Um, what I do like to do, and it's always been like that, is like, like listening to people, understanding why they're trading, how they're trading, and you know, what, what are smart things to do, what, what, what should be avoided. So I, th I think in this first session, we're just going to go through some uh, charts. We're going to not... Uh, intellectualize stuff too much, not too many opinions, but just let, let's look at the market. Um, and, and then over time, we're going to change this format to, to, to make sure that, 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 that you and I are still interested in doing it and that people uh, have, have some sort of benefit uh, of, of us, us doing it. Um, so so I, I think that's, that's, that's what I have to say, really. Uh, maybe you should just look at some, at some charts. Yeah, exactly. Let's look at some popular markets and uh, have a run through, see what we can see. One thing I want to say as well, actually, is, you know, over the last, uh, whatever, 10 years, we've we, you know, been running the Trading Academy and basically it's been you running it. So thank you for, you know, for, for, for all the effort you, you've put into it and, and, and your consistency. And I think, uh, I mean, you've made some really great calls over, over the years. Um, so, yeah, thank you for, uh, for everything you've done. Uh, so let's go to the fun, We're always learning, hey, always learning. And I've learned under the best. So, um Let's go ahead then and uh, jump into those charts. We can begin with a look at some of the popular markets. Now, Lex, just before we um, dive into these, one of the things that caught my eye earlier this week was that uh, apparently stimulus checks have been paid this weekend for the, uh, the public in the US. And that's where a lot of these manias or popular stocks have been driven higher. So that's something which caught my interest this week. And uh, we might see in a few of these names some interesting yeah. moves. I mean, when, when, I look at, uh, when, when I look at Tesla, uh, obviously I see like an amazing entrepreneur, um, a genius brain, um, very inspirational. Um, but I also see a company where very, some very, very smart people were shorting it. If you go back to the early days, were shorting yeah. it at whatever, like 100 or 200. And, you know, they looked at valuations, um, saying, okay, this, this company is now bigger than the whole car industry. It, it makes no sense. So yeah. what, what that has um, shown to me is, is, um, is you know, the, the professionals would have been, um, you know, and, and I'm not sure if we're going to look at GameStop later as well. And you're yeah, driving me kind of insane with the way you go through that chart. So, so my eyes are hurting now. So maybe, maybe go back to the, uh, to, to the big time frame. To, to, to that chart, yeah, leave it like that. Um, and we just saw it like in, in the beginning, well, we don't, we don't need to go back to, to the five or the seven dollar level, but let, let's go to the, I don't know, a lot of people talk about it, like about a hundred bucks at that, that period. So like, I don't know, two years ago. Yeah. And a lot of people were shorting it, smart people were, were, were shorting it. And you know what, they all got, uh, they, they all got wiped out. And I think it's been, yeah, pretty, pretty much impossible to, to, to short the name, but, but what this chart tells me is that, you know, people who are buying this, you know, momentum following, um, 
retail, where you just say, actually, you know what? I don't really care if this company is expensive or not. It doesn't matter. I just want to buy it because I, I love Elon Musk. I, I want to trade. I, I don't really short much. I, I just want to go long. What do I find interesting? Yeah, I find electrical cars interesting. That's the future. So let, let's, just, let's just buy it. Um, obviously, you saw some like real drawdowns where you can lose you know, up to 50% or 30% of your money. Mm. But overall, that trend has been right. And, and retail overall has been right in buying it. And that's why I love this format going forward. It's like, let's just see what, what, you know, what the average person, the person who has received that, that whatever $1,400 check or whatever it is, um, is going to do with that money. And, you know, are they going to buy Tesla again? Are they going to buy something else? Um, and that, that's sort of uh, what I'm thinking of when, when we look at Tesla. Yeah, all valid points. Like, so I think uh, it's certainly been a, an area of interest, and we saw it up 2% yesterday. It's recovered quite a bit off the uh, sell-off of last month, which was savage. You talk about drawdowns. I mean, the stock was nearly at, it was over 900 and uh, almost halved. So, so yeah, uh, so you, lo- you lose 450, uh, or you, you lose, uh, yeah, you lose 350 on, 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 uh, on 900, almost 40% yeah. uh, drawdown. So, so if you use leverage, or use derivative, yeah. yeah, you're going to be wiped out. Um, exactly. Get your timing right, you make 30% in, in, in a week. So the reason we began with Tesla is uh, that's clearly a good proxy for what we've just been discussing, but it's also a key holding in some of the really popular ETFs. So this uh, particular one is called the ARC Innovation ETF, founded by a lady called Kathy Wood, who uh, publicly a couple of weeks ago came out and um, said that she was buying more Tesla. She was really bullish on it. Uh, and it continued to go down for another couple of days and we saw some of those uh, heavy sell-offs. But it actually looks as though this area of the market is beginning or has woken up in the last uh, week or so. So that's uh, the biggest waiting. And then we've got some other popular companies in there like Square, for example, digital payments uh, provider which uh, also saw a really strong day yesterday and has seen some people bounce now. It's below 200 before and it's now at 250, so up 25% pretty much. It's also like Stripe uh, Stripe uh, going public. Um, I think it's $70 billion. Two guys from yeah. Ireland, super nice guys, and, and you know they've, they've, they've done so well for themselves. So I mean, dreams, are, well. <laughs> dream, dream, uh, well. <laughs> dreams, dreams are coming true at the moment. Uh, for, for a lot of the entrepreneurs. And then I think you have to sort of like differentiate between the people really building something and then the, the spec the spec guys, right? And I think yeah. the, uh, yeah. maybe you'll have a look at that, that ETF as well. Um, the SPA. Yeah, so this is the uh, SPAC. So um, the so-called blank check companies, Lex. Tell us a little bit about those. I think it's more your work. No, but basically what you have is like you have a, a company that's that's private and wants to list because I think ultimately what it wants is retail buyers um, because they they are more theme-based as opposed to, to valuation-based. Yeah. So you have a, a private company um, not really ready to go public, not really um, – you know, the accounts might not be ready or history, might not be enough history or they might, you know – like like the Goldman's and the JP Moore's of this world might not under normal circumstances say you're ready to IPO, let's wait a couple of years. Um, but because there's so much retail money around, um, you have these companies that say, you know, they, they merge with a company that's already listed, um, what they call a blank check company. And they, they're trying to find a target, an unlisted target, and then they, they list. And then the uh, expectation or the hope is that, that retail will come in and, and, and buy the stock and then, you know the people who were originally holding the um, the the, um, the target company uh, selling out. Um, the people who are putting money in on, on sort of like institutional level, a lot of them liquidate their positions as well. And then you know, seven, in, in, initially it, it's it's whatever like a hundred percent or ninety percent is held by by non retail, and then in the end it's all offloaded to retail, and <laughs> you know nobody really cares. Um, what happens to the to the stock price anymore? Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's it's clearly a massive trend. Um, but you know, if if you want to be uh, cynical, it's uh, you know a Wall Street game to move um, companies into the hands of retail. Not going to ask them many questions, and 
you know, um, and, and probably are going to lose money. Um, but, but at the same time, huge amount of money is being made. Um, it's almost like a casino. So to yeah. me, spec activity is, is, is casino activity. Tesla is casino activity. Um, but there, there will be some people who are very smart at playing that. Um, and I think we like to hear from those people of like, okay, how do you play a spec? And, and then maybe some people have had bad experiences and say, well, actually, well, this is how not to play a spec. Um, again, I, I don't want these calls to be about, uh, about us agreeing something which might just not be true at all or this, that doesn't resonate. Um, so, yeah, sure. like, like to get feedback from people on what they think of, uh, of specs. Well, what we can see is that this ETF listed only recently, but it had that 30% decline um, when, uh, when interest rates were rising on the rise uh, last month. But off the low, that's, that's, another question. That's, that's, the, that's the other question I have. It's like, I mean, we talk a lot about inflation now. We talk a lot about um, interest rates. And then the question becomes, okay, is this actually, you know, long-term important to markets? I mean, I guess we would say yes, but it seems the gets priced in so quickly that, okay, you know, it, it's, it's whatever, like it's a two-week event, even though it yeah. might be like longer-term trend. It's a two-week event, new buying opportunity, <laughs> sell it off, buy it again, go long and maybe have a quick look at the chart of the S&P just to see where we are in, in yeah, sure. the general market. Up at the top. Basically, so, yeah, I mean, at all time it's, high. It's, it's at a high. So basically what this says to me is, okay, are we worried about interest rates? Are we worried about inflation? I mean, all, all it means is that people are selling stock A and buying stock B, but overall yeah. money is not coming out of the market because people are worried about holding paper currency um, people are people want something real. They want they want the building. Real estate is not collapsing despite Corona in most areas. The markets are doing well. Um, cryptocurrencies are doing well. Um, so this to me is at the moment a much more important. It used to be the T bond is the whatever the long term US bond is the most important one. Now I think you just look at the S and P now. That's the only uh, yeah. yeah, here, like, here's, here's, here's the bond has come off. So, so interest wow. rates are going up, but it doesn't matter for the S&P because the flow, the, the wall of money is still still buying. And, and this is how I look at it. I mean, people who I might be watching might look at it in a completely different way. Um, but I like to, yeah, I, I think yeah, you, you are a big fan of charts. Um, and, and I think there's, there's nothing that, that is as powerful as a new high in... in um, in, in the S&P, I would say. To suck more money in, that's for sure. Yeah. So you yeah, say, yeah. you mentioned that, Lex, you look at the rotation beneath the surface, you can see value is at a high, value S&P, ETF. And then you look at growth, you said it was just money changing hands beneath the surface, making brokers richer. You can see this is how growth has sold off like the other ETFs we were just looking at a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. So it's just but like value, value um, so stocks that are, you know, conventional conventional measures cheap. Um, you know, they, they they've underperformed for I don't know as long as I can remember. Oh yeah, yeah. for about fifteen years that they you know value is is, is a very dangerous thing to to play. Um, <laughs> you know, okay. here's yeah. So it's okay. whatever you look at. Yeah, and thanks for pulling this up so quickly. So if you look at it since two thousand and seven, whatever, it's like yeah, value is done terrible. It might come back now. Who, 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 who knows? Um, and, and again, like the, the way we, you know, used to look at stocks is, you know, you want to, you know, be fundamental people combined with charts, but you, you kind of want to know what this, you know, what the company does that you invest in uh, more than just the latest headlines. But, you know, for now, headlines seem to, to, to really work combined with the, uh, the, like I said, the wall of money. Um, and, and, and let's focus on what is as opposed to what we think, you know, yeah, should sure. be. Why don't we have a run through then? Another way of um, categorizing these themes or areas in the market where there's a lot of interest. If we look at, uh, okay, we can't really deduce much from this chart because it's only just listed, but it's on my watch list just to see the performance daily. There's um, an ETF which launched very recently, which tracks social sentiment online. So the likes of Wall Street Bets and other forums where these stocks are, are typically being touted and discussed, maybe on Twitter as well. 
So if we have a scroll down to these, we can see, for example, some of the names on there. So Ford at the top, we talked about value underperforming growth for years. Well, look at that, uh, you know, car manufacturer, automotive company, heavy cyclical making a comeback. Um, in terms of the charts, I've flagged a few here, which are interesting. We've got American Airlines. So following the uh, the sell-off post-COVID, it's actually worked its way through the various levels. I like to use something called Fibonacci. But what you need to know here is, uh, yeah, it's basically broken out. So it's retraced almost all of the sell-off now. Elsewhere, different sector, Twitter, following a consolidation, is seeing a bounce. This is another um, top holding in this buzz or social sentiment ETF. You've got likes of Facebook and Amazon, which won't necessarily go into now. AMD semiconductors, still a huge shortage being reported by um, many of the uh, the automotive manufacturers, um, particularly those which are, are focused on tech. And also, like maybe when you mentioned some chat rooms, um, mm. you know, the, the markets are clearly driven much more by by by, like I said, like by, by retail, because a lot of a lot of the institutional money they don't want to pay any fees. It's all passive. It's all index trackers. So they're not buying or selling individual stocks. You know, a lot of the, you know, there's some hedge funds obviously like that, that that are still pretty active. But you know, you would think that that the, the deciders of the price, what makes the difference yeah. is is retail and what what drives retail. Well, I mean, chat rooms are are very important. So um, again, be good to get some feedback from people of. You know how much time they actually spend in in, in in chat rooms, and how much actually gets you know you, you talked about Ford here and American Airlines. Mm. How much that actually um, you know are those stocks that get discussed a lot as well, or do they get you know how, how do people look at uh, how do people look at that? This one's insane. Like, pen gaming. I think you looked at the sell off. It was about two or three dollars this time last year, over one hundred and forty now. So it's a retail uh, mania trade. Look how far this has gone. Yeah, like like incredible the the, the volatility, um, and yeah, people do people trade with leverage? Do they borrow money to to trade, um, or, or or don't they? Again, love to get some feedback, and and maybe someone wants to you know tell us they've been long pen since twenty, and they they say it's at one hundred and forty now, and they're now going to really buy some uh, additional stock. You know, if is you've been long, like if, you've been long if you've been long in since twenty twenty one. New Year's Day, you've still doubled your money, 70, pretty much, to 140. Yeah, yeah, Incredible. It's yeah. so exciting. I mean, a lot, lot, lot of super exciting moves. Uh, and if you look at long-term performance of equity markets, you know, if you say, like, okay, you can make, I don't know, 6 or 7% um, return per year, people used to be, you know, not necessarily unhappy with that. Um, wow. now, it's, now it's like a daily move. The age of crypto, hey? It's yeah, so maybe you should look at the, you have some crypto on here as well. Yeah, we do. Um, worth keeping an eye on. So this is another area that uh, so just reset this. Sorry, it's another area that uh, I expect to see some strength. There's um, a little index here on TradingView CIX, which uh, tracks a basket of cryptocurrencies, so not just Bitcoin, and uh, it's making a lower high here, unlike uh, Bitcoin, which is back above 60k, which we'll look at now. But you would say it makes a lower high. So are you getting sorry, a, sorry, a lower high? So it's uh, look divergent to what Bitcoin, the, the big daddy or the big brother, is actually doing. And that's so made a higher high amongst the other cryptocurrencies that it tracks. So there's some divergence there, a little bit like we used to look at with the old uh, Dow uh, transports versus the industrials. It's uh, a bit like that for for Brett. Yeah, I mean it's, it's interesting though because what I find about Bitcoin is, I mean, some people call it, um, you know, digital coal. Because uh, you know, there's there's a lot of energy being wasted. Well, not wasted, invested in 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 in, in mining uh, in mining Bitcoin. And I just wonder, you know, a lot of the people, same people, will be very much ESG oriented as well. Mm. You know, going away from the past into the future, new financial system. You know, be good to the planet. Um, and I wonder how you know how people who you know like owning Bitcoin think about. You know, owning, I think it was something like a clean industrial ETF. Yeah, um, I was going to say, funny you should say that. It's another area where there's a lot of interest, particularly amongst those who trade cryptocurrencies and ARK ETFs and things, is actually clean energy or renewables. So we could uh, have a look up here, for example, at uh, a few of the names on that watch list, or we could take the ETF at the top of taking the US um, ICLN, which is an I Trust Global Clean Energy ETF. 
I mean, it is it is kind of amazing because it's going from eight to thirty four. So you know, times 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 four four and a half. And yeah. what I wonder is like how many people that that trade this will actually know the components of what's in there, right? So again, it's like you That's know how much. Cool. Um, yeah. How much is how much is 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 really um, are we really is are people thematically traded? So so there are a couple of favourites in there. Neo and then and a, then the beauty of that is that um, I, I would, I would, but but I, I would bet that, that that most people trade this are probably retail, and I think most yeah. of the retail are you know like like I say are, are thematic, and so then the question becomes. How many ETFs are just really now created to to get retail money? So to me, the specs are created to get retail money, and I think a lot of ETFs are created to you know pull in uh, pull in in uh, retail money as well. So again, an interesting development um, doesn't necessarily make you money the, that observation in itself, but you know if you think more and more about it, it's 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 a theme that we just. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just super, super relevant. And if if we know when you know the the move into for for institutions ends or is close to the end in passive ETFs, and for retail, you know, ends as well into this where they say actually, what we don't have more money, um, we we need to keep an eye on it. And and that's why again, any feedback is uh, we, we are interested in. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh... Some other names on there, I guess we won't uh, necessarily go through them massively, but just a couple of the movers that stood out on the large weightings here. End phase energy, you can see how that's recovered off other sold. We traced almost 50% of the previous move. NEO, uh, which everybody seems to love in the uh, retail community as it supplies batteries, basically the uh, to, to the equipment of uh, Tesla in China. Um, you can see how that's retraced 50%. Down to daily oversold and has recovered sharply. In the last week or so, might see a continuation there. So there's a bunch of names on here. There's another ETF as well, and uh, yeah, we could. Uh, oh, I could certainly scroll through these charts all day long, but uh, I know we've uh, we've got to stick to the uh, to the agenda and uh, and probably move on. Yeah, so I, I think the agenda is, was really to say, uh, okay, the um, we're going to have regular conversations between you, James, and and, and myself. And we're just going to sort of like share our views on, on not necessarily individual stocks, um, but much, much more on, okay, what's really going on and, and, and trying to have a conversation with um, those that are interested in, in, you know, maybe learning about trading. I don't know. I mean, I've been doing this since, since 92. Um, but people just want to talk about markets. And I mean, often I compare ourselves to, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, where, um, you know, it, it's kind of an addiction because it's interesting, you know, there's always something, uh, there's always something out there that's, that's uh, you know, arouses our interest. Um, and it, it, it just, just be, I mean, I would say we're a bunch of addicts, but, you know, we all love markets and we all love talking about it. And it's, there's always something new. Um, so, so we can just talk. Uh, t- let's let's talk markets. You know, and I think this is a forum where we're trying to, you know, maybe provoke a little bit. Uh, but definitely, I mean, from my perspective, I love to learn. So I love to learn from people out there, and 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 see what they're up to and what they're doing and what they're thinking. Um, because again, same as as ten years ago, you know, the man on the street, the woman on the street, um, might be a much better trader than the. Uh, person who happens to work for a big institution or for a hedge fund. So that's, um, I think that's my sign off. I don't know what you have to add uh, to that, James. No, it's interesting, Lex. There's nothing, uh, nothing from me. I think I'll keep it, uh, keep it brief and uh, let's do this again. Perfect.